If you're looking for a VPN router to buy, then you're in the right place. Today, we'll be showcasing the best VPN ready routers in three different price ranges for 2023. Also stick around for the end of the video as we'll even throw in some extra options to spice things up. Before we start, make sure to check the timestamps below the video to skip to the different price categories. Also, I want to emphasize that we're not sponsored by any of the companies that are, will be shown in this video. My goal was to provide you guys with the best options that are out there on the market. Now, when picking a VPN router or any router for that matter, consider a few things like how big is your house or even what materials is your house made of? The reason for these questions is because Wi-Fi signals need to travel to your devices in order to provide a good quality connection. For instance, 2.4 gigahertz band connection has a range of up to around 45 meters, while the faster 5 gigahertz band can only travel to up around 15 meters or so. Now, you can also use repeaters or access points, which can further extend that Wi-Fi signal to areas of the house that may not be covered so well. In terms of materials, drywalls are better since they don't dampen Wi-Fi signals as much as brick walls or concrete walls do. One other thing to note is that you may only need a VPN for a specific device like your TV or a console. In that case, you may be okay with having that VPN router set up in that one area where the device is located. The last thing I'll say before dwelling into the recommendations is that there are a lot, and I do mean a lot of different options for routers available. So much so that there are models for specific regions or even countries. For example, one router may only be available in the US or only in the EU and etc. Which is why recommending routers isn't a one size fits all solution. With this list, what I wanted to do is give you two options for each category a US and EU model. So starting with the budget of up to 50 US dollars, I'd say one of the best VPN routers in this price range is the GL iNet MT300N Mango. We did feature this router last year as one of the best options, and that's for a good reason. Not only does it feature decent enough specs for the price of 128 megs of RAM, a good enough CPU, but more importantly, it also supports OpenVPN and the WireGuard VPN protocol, which is probably one of the only routers in this price range that supports WireGuard right out of the box. There are a few things to keep in mind though, like you will be limited to only two ethernet ports, one of which is a BAM port, and it doesn't have external antennas, so you might have trouble covering a huge household, but really that's not what this router was designed for. Its main purpose is to be a travel router, hence the USB port at the back, which you can use to actually power it using a power bank. Such a router becomes very useful when you're at a hotel and things like that. It helps as well that GL iNet's router firmware is feature rich and easy to use and configure. So is it the best router out there? Mm, no, but for the price, it's awesome. The 10,000 positive reviews on Amazon also showcase that people are generally very happy with it. Now, the GL iNet 300N is available in both US and EU, so you shouldn't have any problems finding it. And honestly, finding a different option in this price range is quite challenging. So instead, if you are feeling a bit adventurous and really need a VPN sharing solution for cheap, then I will suggest getting a, or rather reusing an old PC and turning that into a router. You may also have to buy a network card, but that's about it. After that, you'll need to install PFSense or OpenSense onto your PC. And while we currently don't have a guide for this, there's plenty of guides out there on how to do this. Though we will be making our own tutorial on this channel eventually, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Let's now move up to the mid-range price point, starting from 50 all the way to 100 US dollars. Here, our options open up a bit, and currently there's a really good deal for the ASUS RT-AC67P, which can be found in the US. It has three external antennas and can cover even bigger households. More importantly, it also has good firmware and supports the OpenVPN protocol. Now, OpenVPN isn't as fast as WireGuard, so do keep that in mind. If you need more speed, picking the GL iNet might still be a better option for you. Now, if you're in the EU, a good model to look for is the ASUS RT-AX53U. As I'm making of this video, it's currently on sale, but can usually be found at around 65 euros or so. It's actually a bit better than the US recommendation due to it having more antennas, but in terms of VPN performance, they're actually very similar. By the way, if you need help setting up any of these Asus routers, then check the description of the video where we will be linking our how-to tutorials for each router brand. Moving to our high-end router recommendation category from 100 to 200 US dollars, we got the GL iNet GL-AX 1800. I really, really like this router. It has a lot of ethernet ports, 
four external antennas, but more importantly, it has OpenVPN and WireGuard support. If you can expand your budget just a bit and upgrade from the previous category to this one, it would be very beneficial, again, due to it having that WireGuard protocol support. What's also good is that it is available in both the US and EU. For an alternative model available in the US, we got the ASUS RT-AX3000. What makes this particular router a bit better than the previous ASUS ones is that it does support WireGuard with the latest ASUS WRT 4.0 firmware. Additionally, it has 512 megs of RAM, four external antennas, Wi-Fi 6 support, plus a tri-core processor. Overall, this option is decent, but I would still lean more towards the GLI Net option for its price and slightly better processor. Though, if you like ASUS firmware, the AX3000 is a solid choice. If you're in the EU, a good router to look for in this price range is the first generation Kinetic Titan. You may not have heard of Kinetic, but they're a really reputable router brand and similar to the previous options, this router does have WireGuard VPN support. Spec wise, it's not as good as say the ASUS or the GLINet, rocking just 256 megabytes of RAM alongside a dual core processor. So overall, this wouldn't be my first choice, but it is an alternative option if you ever need one. All right, so that's all the routers in three different price ranges, but now let's go over some of the options available if you would choose to flash your router. Flashing your router essentially means installing a different operating system onto your router. Some of the more popular available firmwares for routers include OpenWRT, DDWRT, and PCWRT. They all have different levels of support for different routers, and here's a few that work really well. First custom router recommendation would be the very popular TP-Link Archer C7. Now, these might be harder to find, at least on Amazon, however, they are readily available in the used market. I've personally tried OpenWRT and DDWRT firmwares on this router, and it actually works really, really great. Though PCWRT also has support for it as well. Since the router is so popular, forums and people who can help troubleshoot any problems are readily available, which also makes this an attractive choice. Oh, and we also made a whole video on how to flash it and set up OpenWRT on this particular router. So if you're interested, go click on the card right over here. An honorable mention also goes to the Archer C6 version three, if you can find that one. Next, for something a bit more beefy, a great option to look for is the Linksys E8450. It has great OpenWRT support and also has things like Wi-Fi 6, half a gig of memory, dual core CPU, and much more. One more honorable mention goes to the Belkin RT3200, which is also widely recommended by the custom router firmware community. Lastly, for a bit more of a jerry rig solution, you could buy a Raspberry Pi 4 or 3, install OpenWRT, and use your old router as an access point. This would be less ideal in my opinion because you can have a different problems when having this kind of solution, but nonetheless, it is an option and you can use it if you would like to. All right, so there are your VPN router recommendations for 2023. We could have made a longer video going more in depth, talking about each router and its intricacies, but for a short, here's what we recommend type of video, I think this will do. In conclusion, if you are looking for a simple plug and play VPN router solution, prepare to spend a bit more money. I would also highly consider picking only the routers that support the WireGuard protocol, since it is much faster than OpenVPN. On the other hand, if you like to tinker with technology and are not afraid of flashing your router, you could save a lot of money. I've read stories of people finding amazing deals on used routers like from Linksys and from Netgear, which do support OpenWRT and DDWRT firmwares. So again, if you want to spend a bit more time tinkering and learning about routers and networking, this is a good way to go with. To help you get started on that, we even made a whole video, which you can find over here, where we took a 10-year-old TP-Link router, which is actually this router sitting on the desk, and we show you how we flash it and how we set up WireGuard VPN on it. But that'll be all for me. Take care.